Hello all, uh, welcome to this webinar and thanks for attending. Uh, today I'm going to talk about edge computing, how it is important for multiplayer gaming, and then I'm going to show a solution to deploy multiplayer game server at the edge based on different open source technologies. So in particular, we will look at uh, how to deploy Kubernetes clusters on the edge based on K3S distribution. And then we are going to use Agones, that is an open source platform built on top of Kubernetes to deploy game servers. I will also talk about uh, uh, some tools by Open Nebula that allow us to uh, deploy resources on the edge. So let me introduce myself a bit. I work at Open Nebula, uh, that is a company based in Madrid that focuses on building open source solution for edge and the cloud computing. I work remotely from Lecce, is in the south of Italy, as a cloud technical evangelist. So I engage with the community. I talk at events, uh, webinars, to showcase open source uh, technologies that are related to cloud computing, edge computing, Kubernetes, containers, and, um, and so on. Okay, so let's move to edge computing. Now, it is not just a buzzword. It is uh, a new real paradigm, computing paradigm, um, that uh, requires some technological challenges because uh, what we need to do is to bring the computation, uh, data, storage, closer to the location where it is needed. In order to improve response times, to save bandwidth, to reduce data transfer. So edge computing plays an important role in, dif in different sectors like gaming. So this is what we are going to talk uh, about today. And but also broadcasting, streaming, um, Internet of Things, smart cities and uh, virtual desktop infrastructure. So edge computing is important from appl for applications that require low, ultra low latency, that re require high bandwidth, fast response, real-time analytics. Uh, and um, these are uh, the main benefits that we can get by using this new paradigm. If we look at multiplayer gaming, uh, edge computing can be a game changer. Today, multiplayer game, online gaming represents a big percentage you know, of the entertainment in general. And some types of games are very popular, like first-person shooters, like Destiny 2 or Call of Duty. We have multiplayer on online battle arena, like League of Legends, Dota 2, and also very popular battle royale games such as Fortnite or Apex Legends. So all those games are played worldwide by millions of players. So how they work? Usually there is a matchmaking system. So people join a queue and then the system match players from this pool and when there is the right number of people that can go from 10 to hundreds of people, a game is created. Now, in order to start a game, a game server is deployed. And a game server is a dedicated server for the game between the players that are involved. So when a game starts, all players connect to these dedicated game servers and they send information during the whole game to the game server that will um, uh, process all the actions that are coming from the player. So if the player is jumping, is running, is shooting, all this information is sent to the game server that uh, then will run the full simulation, the physics, by taking into account all the player actions. And then the server transmits data about the game state to the clients, so each client will have the, their own accurate version of the game state to be displayed, to be rendered by the uh, GPU client, okay? So edge computing is important for multiplayer online gaming because in the case of these fast-paced games, we need to lower latency as much as possible. So in order to provide a satisfying gameplay to the players. Now, we cannot use an approach based on a central data center where all game servers are deployed because this will increase latency, will decrease game response time, and also the perceived game quality. 
And so players will not tolerate this kind of service. Instead, by using an edge computing paradigm, we can improve the gaming experience. Why? By provisioning game servers as close as possible to the pool of users that participates to the game. And then we, so we can drastically reduce latency. We can transmit data faster than using a large centralized data center where all game servers are deployed. Also, we have to take into account that uh, if a game is a global deployment, so is played the worldwide, there is also a need for scaling dynamically these, those resources in order to satisfy the demand at particular times. So in a particular time, in a time zone, you can have a peak, maybe it's the evening after the work time. And in another time zone, there is a low demand of resources because most of the people, for example, are sleeping. So we have to take into account all of this. So for multiplayer online gaming, we have to uh, take into account these dynamically resources that must be created and uh, deleted. And also we have to take into account latency. Now, in order to set up an edge computing solution for multiplayer game, we are going to use several technologies. So let's start from Agones. Um, Agones is a, an open source platform for deploying, scaling, and orchestrating game servers, you now for multiplayer games. And this has been built on top of Kubernetes. So Agones extend Kubernetes. Um, so you can use standard Kubernetes tooling and APIs like kubectl to create, run, run, manage, and scale dedicated game server. The second technology that we are going to look is K3S. So K3S is an official now CNCF sandbox project. It's a certified Kubernetes distribution and is ideal for edge deployments because it's uh, packaged as a single binary, less than 40 megabytes. So it has fast provisioning, uh, comes with minimal to no, to no operating system dependencies. He also can run on several processor architecture from Intel x86 to, uh, to ARM architecture. So K3S is, uh, has two components. As the server that is in charge of managing the cluster, deploying container as pods, and the K3S agent that has the function uh, as a worker, no? is so in charge of running and uh, executing pods. Okay, so now let's look at the solution that we are going to show also with the demo in a uh, in few minutes. So we are going to use a couple of tools uh, also developed by Open Nebula. One is called the One Provision. Uh, so One Provision is a tool that uh, allows to dynamically grow a cloud infrastructure. So with the physical resources that runs on remote cloud providers. And so we can... Uh, uh, create resources, for example, on Equinix Metal, on AWS, on other cloud uh, providers. And with one provision, we can deploy on these cloud providers uh, a fully functional Open Nebula cluster. So with the computing, with the storage, with the networking uh, resources. And this uh, cluster will be managed by using uh, uh, Open Nebula. Um, computing resources uh, will be configured in, uh, by using uh, Firecracker, that is uh, an open source solution by Amazon Web Services. And uh, that has been integrated in Open Nebula to create and manage secure and multi-tenant container-based services and applications. Um, then with another tool uh, from Open Nebula that is called One, OneFlow, we are going to deploy K3S clusters on resources provisioned by one provision. So K3S clusters are deployed as Firecracker uh, micro VMs. And uh, we have to take into account that uh, Firecracker micro VMs is a very fast startup time and a, a very low memory of overhead with respect to traditional virtual machines. Um, in order to deploy a K3S cluster, we start from a K3S Docker image that uh, has been built with uh, a Docker file. And then we can define a service template that will be instantiated to deploy a K3S clusters on edge resources. So when, a K when the cluster is deployed, 
We can use a standard Kubernetes tool like uh, kubectl, and uh, we can deploy Agones on uh, in the clusters, and then we can still use kubectl by deploying a game server within uh, Agones. And uh, for example, in the demo, we are going to use Sonotic, that is a, an open source and a free uh, first person shooter. And we are going to use uh, then the Exonotic game client to connect to the game server. Okay, so uh, now let's see uh, a demo. So I will show how this solution works and uh, for multiplayer gaming at the edge. Okay, so uh, let's start with the demo. So here we have one provision that is the tool by Open Nebula in order to provide resources, that's the edge, so remote cloud providers. So here I have defined already providers in uh, by considering AWS, uh, the facility in London. Uh, I will show you how to create another provider. So we are going to select, uh, in this case, packet, Equinix Mecca. We are going to select uh, the template for the Amsterdam facility. And then uh, here we can change the name, for example, Amsterdam. And then um, here we are going to use uh, to configure the connection. So I'm going to the console or Equinix method. Here I defined, uh, I created the project. If I go here, this is the project ID. So we can copy the project ID and put here. And then I defined also a, an API key for the demo. So I can copy this one and I put here. Okay. Now we can finish. So here the provider has been configured. When the provider has been configured, we can provision resources on that provider. So let's go and provision resources on, uh, on a packet by using uh, uh, Firecracker as a, an advisor technology. So we select here the provider in Amsterdam. Here we can put the name, for example, MS1. And then we can configure the inputs. So the number of hosts that we'd like to create, the number of public IP, for example, is set four. Here you can select the different size for the resources for the server. And here you can choose the uh, for example, the operating system. So let's finish uh, this, and uh, now the provision will start. One provision uses uh, uh, Terraform to create resources, and then we'll use Ansible to configure the host, and it will, it will going to create uh, computing resources, so in this case, uh, two servers, uh, uh, storage, so data stores, um, to, for the VM, and then uh, in the networks, the public networks with uh, for public IP that we can use. Okay, now let's go to the Open Nebula Sunstorm. This is the graphical user interface of Open Nebula. I will show you in the infrastructure. Now there is a, a cluster that has been uh, created by one provision. I call it packet MS1. Here you can see also the host that have been uh, is going to be provisioned. Also, to show you in the project on Equinix, if I go on servers, here you you are that the hosts are being created on uh, Equinix uh, Metal. So I selected the location MS1, uh, CentOS operating system, the T1 small uh, configuration for the instance. Okay, so so this is how to provision resources on a provider. Then let's see how we can deploy a Kubernetes clusters when, once we have uh, a cluster available. So first of all, what we have to do is to create an image, a Docker image, and import in the data store in Open Nebula. Here I already imported a K3S image. I will show you how you can create an image starting from a Docker file, for example. So let's call this K3S new. And here we can define the sides. And then uh, here I have a Docker file. 
that uh, I can use to build uh, an image containing uh, uh, K3As, no? that I will download from uh, the GitHub um, repository. And here I, I'm going to download the version one, 17. OK? So once you click Create, what is, is happening here is that uh, um, is going, uh, OpenAble is going to build this image, is going to be contextualized with uh, the contextualization package on OpenAble, so we can have uh, SSH, we can have networking, and so on, OK? So this uh, image will be enhanced with the contextualization package of uh, OpenAble. When we have the image, we can define a couple of templates for the micro VM that uh, will be deployed on the resources with the Firecracker. So we've defined two templates, one for the server component. And uh, here in the template, you can have, uh, you can define the memory, the CPU, and we are going to associate the storage, so the image, Docker image, to this uh, template. We can associate a network. In this case, it's automatic selection. That means that uh, when we are going to deploy at runtime, the network uh, belonging to the, the cluster will be selected. And um, uh, an important thing is the context part. So here we have defined a start script. So the start script will get some information from the VM, like, for example, the public IP. And then uh, we'll start the, uh, sorry, the, it will start the K3S server. Um, also, when it, um, we, uh, we execute, uh, we launch the K3S server, a token will be generated. This token will be put as a, a key in the metadata server of OpenAble that is called one gate, okay? Because this token will be used by the agent in order to start and to connect to the server. Um, so we have defined also a, a template for the agent. So uh, also for this, you can define memory, CPU. We associate the same image that we have defined for the server. Here also for the network is automatic. So the difference is in the context. So the start script it is different. So in this case, is, the script is going to get by using the one gate, the metal server open able is going to get the IP of the server, is going to get the token, and then it will uh, start in this case, instead of the server is going to start the agent. Um, okay, once we define these two templates, we can define a template for the service. So for the cluster, where we have defined uh, two roles, one for the server and one for the agent and we associate the two templates that we have previously defined. Um, okay, so in this case, we are going to, by the, when we are going to instantiate the service, we have uh, a cardinality for server equal to one. That means one server will be deployed and uh, we will deploy two agents. Um, in the case of the agent, I have defined, for example, a minimal VM equal to one and maximum VM or equal to 10 with a cooldown of two seconds between each scaling operation. Because by using one flow, you can scale at runtime. And so for example, if we need more agents, we, we can scale to more agents, okay? So now let's uh, instantiate the, the service. And uh, uh, here we have an attributes that we are going to pass to the template. And it will be in the name of the cluster that we would like to deploy the, the, the K-Trace clusters, OK? So in this case, we, we are going to deploy on uh, packet, on the cluster packet, MS1. And let me go to create the service. OK, so now this service is going to create the server uh, first and then the agent, OK? Um, here you see this in prolonged state. While this will create the K3S server, I will show you here, as you can see, the provision is finished. And uh, here we have now the, you see the cluster that is in a running state. And uh, also in the Open Nebula Sunstone 
If you interface, you can see that the hosts now are on, so are available. So we can deploy the K3S clusters, uh, the K3S cluster here. Uh, so let's look back to the... So here, uh, the service is going to now, the K3S server is going to boot and to run. And uh, um, here we can see that uh, he has a public IP that now we will use to connect, uh, to deploy Agones. Okay, so let's first download the, the configuration file for connecting to, so this, the file is still not available, so it's still uh, uh, starting. And copy the IP. Uh, yeah, you can see that the okay, now we started. So now we can connect to the so we can copy the configuration file to connect to the Kubernetes cluster. So let me change the local IP with the, the public IP in the configuration file. And now we can export the file and we can connect. So for example, let's see which nodes. But at the moment is uh, only the master is available, so only the server. If we look here, you see also the agent are now running. So uh, the start script is uh, starting also the agent. So let's check back again. Now we have also the agent that uh, joined the, the cluster. So now what we are going to do is to create, uh, to deploy Agones on this. So we can create the namespace and then we can uh, install Agones, okay, in the namespace. Okay, now let's check the, the ports. Okay, here we see that someone is already running, some are creating, and so they are, okay. Um, so once Agones has been deployed, we are going now to deploy a game server. So, not, so I've defined a file. Uh, this is a, a fleet, so we can deploy uh, different, several game servers. So we can define, for example, the replicas, also the type of scheduling we can, decide between distributed packet according to the, if it's the cluster is dynamic or is it static. So in this case, I will uh, deploy this fleet and this will be uh, two game servers will be deployed on the cluster. Okay, so let me apply first this. And now we can do this. So first of all, let's check the fleet. Here we have uh, two Exonopic, the side two current, and uh, we don't have any uh, game server ready. So we can uh, check game server by using, the, as, as you see, we are using the uh, kubectl because Agones now extend Kubernetes, so you can use the API of Kubernetes. So let's check the, the game server. So this will take some time because um, uh, in this case, we don't have the image of the Xonotic on the on the clusters, uh, on the Kubernetes cluster. So it's taking some time on pull, on pulling the image. We can check this by using uh, describe. And then let's see here. So I, as you can see here, is still pulling the image. So um, we we need to wait a bit in order to the image to be pulled. Meanwhile, just want to say that uh, here we have deployed the clusters on uh, on a packet, right? Um, uh, clearly, if uh, uh, we would like to to deploy the clusters on another provider, for example, on AWS, so the first thing is also to provision the other resources, for example, on AWS. So here, for example, let me go and. Uh, um, also start the provisioning on AWS London, okay? 
So let's call it, so this is London. Uh, and here we can define again the number of servers, the number of public IP. This is the NMI, NMI for CentOS. And here we can select the instance no? for uh, the, the provisioning. In this case, our bare metal server from Amazon. So when I click finish here, here is starting the provisioning or also this. I will show you also in this case, another cluster has been created here. Uh, also another host, in this case, I choose just one host, is going to be provisioning. And also I have here the, the instances, so still not running. Um, and in, with Terrum is going to run to create now here uh, an instance for in, uh, in land. Um, so let's see. If, uh, okay, so now it's running. Okay. Okay. So let's go back and see if now the game server are ready. Okay. So meanwhile, the, the image has been pulled. Now we have two game servers that are ready. And now let me show how to. So we can connect now with the client. So this is the client for Sonotic, this free person. First person shooter. Uh, okay, so, and now what we can do is just join one of these game servers, okay? So, so let me put here this uh, address. And then the port, okay? Now we can join. It's loading and now it's joining the game server. And uh, let's see, should start. And now I am here. You can see that I am in the game and I'm playing now the game, okay? Here, for example, uh, the game server has been created with uh, some bots within, okay? You can see that there are some bots in, in the game, okay? Um, okay, now I can quit this. I cannot, okay. Let's see if I can shoot this one. Maybe not, okay. Let's, uh, let me quit this. Um, and um, so we can use uh, the, um, uh, the kubectl, for example, to also scale game server. So let's say we need more game server. So what we can do is using kubectl, scale, fleet, and then uh, for sonotics, let's say for replicas. Now, if we check the, the fleet, we see that we have four for decided the current and only two ready. But uh, in few seconds, we will have four ready. Now, this is faster because we already downloaded the, the exonotic image on the servers. Okay. So, uh, and then we, we will maybe we want to shut down some game servers, we can set replicas equal to one. And now what is going to happen is that the servers are going to be shut down. So that's how it works with it. Okay, so we can scale game servers. I will show also to you how to uh, scale, for example, also the K3S cluster. So if we need uh, more agents, we can do uh, this by using uh, uh, one flow. For example, we can click on the agent and then we can click on scale. And so let's say, for example, that instead of two, we would like to have three agents, okay? So what is going to happen now is that uh, a new uh, agent is going to be deployed on the resource and this will join also the cluster, okay? So uh, this is for the demo. And uh, well, uh, I think uh, that this is a whole. I hope that you enjoyed this webinar and uh, you have some uh, uh, fun with <laughs> this deployment. And um, you can uh, check also this, the website, oneedge.io, where you can find information about uh, the edge cloud architecture by uh, OpenNebula. Okay, thanks to all for attending this webinar. Bye.